The goods and services tax is set to come into effect from midnight today. The government has claimed that the tax proposal is based on the idea one nation, one market. GST is not ease of doing business. Nahi hai. GST is a way of doing business. Ki bhi ek de raha. There have been a number of protests in the state against the goods and services tax by traders who say their business has been badly hit. GST is a good idea, but सरकार ने उसके इंप्लीमेंटेशन को बिल्कुल गलत तरीके से किया और इसके कारण जीडीपी को इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ को जबरदस्त नुकसान हुआ है Hi everybody on 1st of July 2017 the government of India made the grand announcement of the goods and service tax or GST and as soon as this announcement was made the largest democracy in the world went through a major economic overhaul and as usual just like any other major policy while on one side there was a segment of media that glorified this move and on the other side we had people portraying it as a disaster in the making while on one side gst was a subject of celebration on the other side it was a subject of protest so now that it's been 5 years since its implementation and with the elections coming up very soon if you want to be a well informed citizen now would be a good time to understand the impact of gst in your life and my life So in this economic case study let's do a deep dive and try to understand why exactly was the GST system implemented how did it affect the economy of India both in good ways and bad ways and most importantly as students of business what are the study materials and factors that will help you understand this revolutionary economic policy of India This video is brought to you by Kuku FM but more on this at the end of the video To understand GST, we first have to understand the fundamental reason as to why was GST implemented in India and what were the problems in the old taxation system. So, as usual, let's try to understand this using a story. Let's say a pack of juice costs hundred rupees to manufacture, and they have a profit margin of ten percent, which means the cost of production is one hundred and ten rupees. Now, under the old tax system, the manufacturer would first add ten percent of his margin, which would make it hundred and ten rupees. and then 12% excise duty gets added making it 123.2 rupees and on top of that 12.5% vat gets added making it 138.6 rupees this will be the invoiced amount to the wholesaler now when the wholesaler gets the juice she would add her 10% margin on this amount of 123.2 rupees plus 12.5% vat which will take the price to 152.46 rupees and she can then claim input tax credit on vat that was levied to her in her invoice Now you see the problem over here is that the excise duty is levied and then 12.5% VAT is applied on top of the summation which makes it tax on tax. This is what you call as the cascading effect of tax and because of this the cost of the product increases not because of the production but because of the taxes. So after 2017 the government said instead of having a VAT and excise duty applied in this way let's have a single tax structure called the goods and service tax. and this is how ladies and gentlemen the gst system came into existence now the question over here is how does this gst system change the economics of this supply chain well now let's take the same pack of juice that costs 100 rupees to manufacture and the manufacturer has a profit margin of 10% which means the cost of production is 110 rupees now fruit juices are in the 12% gst category so adding another 12% to this which is 13.2 rupees we have a total of 123.2 rupees this is the amount that the manufacturer will invoice the next entity in the supply chain who is the wholesaler so now that the wholesaler has bought the juice at 123.2 rupees now as per the new system he will have to add 10% to this amount of 110 rupees and not this amount of 123.2 rupees and since this value of 123.2 rupees already includes a tax of 13.2 rupees he is also eligible for an input tax credit so in the gst system the value added by the wholesaler must be added to the basic sale price of the retailer which is 110 rupees so if he adds another 10% on the 110 rupees sales price that makes the juice cost 110 plus 10% which is 11 rupees to 121 rupees And now GST of 12% is added to this amount of 121 rupees which takes the amount to 135.52 rupees. This will be the cost of the same juice in the GST system as compared to the old taxation system. So you see there are three major benefits that GST brings to this system. First of all, you don't end up paying tax on tax. Secondly, because of this the cost of the products drops down significantly in this case the cost of the same juice packet came down drastically from 152.46 rupees to 135.52 rupees 
and if you remember from our India China video, this reduction in tax burden makes the Indian market extremely competitive. And especially with the rise of Asian economies like Vietnam, Malaysia, and Bangladesh, we cannot afford to scare away foreign companies because of our tax burden. And thirdly, the input tax credit to the businesses helps them pay less tax. Now to explain this, the calculation we have done has already become very messy. So I'll quickly explain input tax credit with another simple example. You see, in the old tax system, if a consultant charges 15% service tax on services of 75,000 rupees, his output tax was 75,000 into 15%, which is 11,250 rupees. Then, if he purchased office supplies for 25,000 rupees by paying 5% VAT, which is 1,250 rupees. But back then, he had to pay this amount of 11,250 rupees of service tax without getting any deduction of 1,250 rupees of VAT, which he has already paid on the stationery. So his total tax outflow back then was 12,500 rupees. But after the GST implementation, GST on services of 75,000 rupees at 18% amounts to 13,500 rupees. But now he could claim the subtraction of GST on the office supplies, which is 25,000 into 5%, that is 1,250 rupees. So now his net GST liability to be paid is 12,250 rupees. So this way, the businesses can get an input tax credit by which, again, they end up paying less taxes. And apart from this, there are two more major benefits of GST. Number one is the free movement of goods for interstate trade. And number two is the curbing of black income generation. So let's quickly try to understand this using a story. Did you know one of the most ridiculous problems faced by a logistic system is the bottleneck at check posts. And even you might have seen a long line of trucks standing right before the state check posts, right? And the most astonishing fact is that these trucks used to spend 16% of their time at check posts just to pay state tax or the entry tax. Which means if the truck was running for 100 hours, 16 hours of its time was spent only at check posts. This time, by the way, is equivalent to one complete trip from Pune to Bangalore. The question is, why did these trucks stop and what do they have to do with taxes? Well, back then, instead of a single variable called GST, tax varied from state to state. In fact, there were even cities and corporation limits that had different tax structures. For example, in Maharashtra, on top of that, in the city of Pune, you also had something called the LBT or local body tax. And whenever a vehicle passed from Pune, at the checkpoint, they had to check both VAT and LBT. So if there was someone shipping goods from Chennai who did not know about paying LBT at Pune, then that truck driver would have to pay tax from his own pocket before the truck moved ahead. And this is where a lot of corruption took place, wherein people started taking under the table deals or the truck used to waste a lot of time in just being halted. And just like Pune, there were other cities and states that had their own tax structure to cause complication in the interstate trade. But after GST came in, now you only need an e-way bill and that's it. You don't need to pay any other tax or be worried about special taxes. This is how, ladies and gentlemen, GST eased the process of the interstate trading. And lastly, the GST monitoring system prevented a ton of tax evasion. To understand this again, let's go back to our juice case study. Here we had our manufacturer, wholesaler and retailer. Now while filing taxes under GST, all the purchases with sales invoices are required to be uploaded in the GSTN website at the end of each month. And each of them are tracked through their GST number. So let's say the wholesaler doesn't pay GST and gives a fake invoice to the retailer. Now the manufacturer and retailer paid their GST on the website. So the transaction of the supply chain has entered the system and it's clearly seen that the wholesaler with an ABC GST number has done his business with them but has not paid his taxes. So automatically, the system would state that the wholesaler is due for his GST payment. This way, the government can easily catch hold of the wholesaler using the missing link in our supply chain. And you would be delighted to know that as of December 2021, GST evasion of 40,000 crores has been detected from fake invoicing and fraud claims. This is the reason why it is considered to be one of the most revolutionary moves for the economy of India. So this is an excellent system, right? Businesses save money, consumers save money, costs go down and the government is able to prevent malpractices. Then the question over here is, why do so many people have a problem with GST? And this is what brings me to the dark side of the GST system. No doubt, in our country, people GST. GST with seven or possibly more rates it is a mockery of GST. By definition, GST is a single tax. If you think that the country is not yet ready for a single tax, 
don't have it but don't call it gst and this is where we have three major disadvantages first of all just like it saves taxes for some industries for other industries it actually increases the tax burden a classic example is the gaming industry of india in july the group of ministers reportedly presented a report recommending that online gaming activities should be taxed at a flat 28% on the full value of consideration without making any distinction between the game of skill and the game of chance for those who don't know in the gaming industry we have game of chance and games of skill game of chance could be anything like betting and lotteries where the user solely wins on the basis of luck and games of skill are games like a shooting games chess rummy or even fantasy sports now wherein the skill of the player is primary in determining the result of the game now the catch over here is that the group of ministers proposed a 28% tax irrespective of whether that is a game of skill or a game of chance and more importantly this 28% is not on the platform fee but on the content entry amount itself for example if 12 users are playing a game for a price pool of 1000 rupees then every user is putting in 100 rupees from her pocket to enter the contest so the platform collects 1200 rupees out of which 1000 rupees is given back to the winning players and the platform keeps 200 rupees as its own fee so even though the platform fee is just 200 rupees the 28% gst is proposed to be applied on this 1200 rupees of content entry amount even if it's a game of skill so you see this increases the gst on the entire industry by multiple folds and while most of us think that this is good revenue for the government it actually brings three major disadvantages and this applies for every other industry the first issue is that this tax will be passed on to the players and consumers making it uneconomical for them to play these games and this could push the users to look for offshore online gambling and betting whereby players don't pay anything to the government number 2 the gaming industry is attracted 3 to 5 billion dollars to the indian markets so a higher tax burden will scare away the investors who want to invest in the indian gaming industry furthermore the current legitimate gaming companies will find it very difficult to survive and lastly when the courts have repeatedly ruled that the games of skill are legitimate businesses putting them on par with games of chance like lotteries and casinos that would be incorrect and that would completely discourage entrepreneurs and developers in the game of skill markets so you see gst in this case has caused a loss to a specific industry and its stakeholders and this is a big big problem so if it's not tackled well and early it could stifle an entire group of industries in india and secondly the states have a problem with gst because it rewards the consumer states and in a way harms the producer states for example let's say there is a packet of potato chips which are manufactured in chennai and sold in patna now here bihar would collect the taxes on potato chips consumed in bihar even if they were manufactured in tamil nadu so if 12 rupees igst is collected in bihar on potato chips then 6 rupees goes to the consuming state as in bihar and 6 rupees goes to the center and from this share of the center a certain portion of it is allocated for the producer state if i'm not wrong it's close to 42% and this is very very problematic because states like tamil nadu have made massive investments on roads highways and ports to create a ecosystem for manufacturing to thrive so until gst came in they were entitled to extract a return on their investment by claiming taxes at the point of origin as in the place where the product is being manufactured and now this major source of income is at stake this is the reason why the tamil nadu government which operates the second largest state economy had an objection with gst This is the reason why the government applied cess and promised compensation to the states for their losses for the first 5 years that is until 2022 but all thanks to the pandemic that clearly did not work out well thirdly we have a problem with penalty payments so even if you are a responsible businessman who pays his taxes on time even if your supplier does not pay the gst then you are not allowed to avail the tax credit for that particular invoice and lastly in the gst system there is no system to revise your filings so even after 5 years of its implementation there are some major problems in the system that need to be rectified and this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that are as citizens of india what are we supposed to do to keep a check on this gst system and as students of business what are the study materials to help you understand this gst system better 
Meanwhile, if you're someone who wants to know more about this GST case study in your own regional language, you can check out the GST Explained audio show on Kuku FM app. Kuku FM is India's leading audio learning platform with 4.5 plus rating and a thousand plus non-fiction audio books in multiple regional languages all across India. And my favorite books in this app, apart from this GST case study, is The Art of War for Geopolitics and Start with Why for Business. So if these kind of subjects intrigue you, go download the Kuku FM app from the link in the description. And by the way, only for Think Schoolers, the coupon code Diwali50 will be active from 19th through 25th of October. And this will help you get 50% off on the premium subscription and a chance to win gifts like car, gold coins and vouchers up to 10 lakh rupees. Firstly, as citizens, we need to keep a check on three important things. Number one, how is GST generating revenue for the producer state as opposed to the consumer state? Because if this carries on for long and producer states incur losses, the producer states will be too reluctant to attract businesses and the consumer states will be lavish and will spend on anything but business. And that could be a disaster for the Indian economy. For this, I'm attaching links to help you understand Tamil Nadu's side of the story and the summary of the 43rd GST Council meeting. Number two, we need to keep an eye on how does the government bring a system to directly penalize the tax evaders instead of using the honest taxpayers as scapegoat. And lastly, we need to push the government such that the GST system decreases the burden of certain industries that are right now being taxed unfairly. Because again, that could stifle the growth of an entire group of industries. For this, I'm attaching a few documents that will help you understand these affected industries better and their side of the story as to how GST is affecting them in a bad way. So do have a look at them and let me know what you think. That's all from my side of today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button so that YouTube algorithm understands that this content is valuable enough to spread it to more people like you. And for more such business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.